Welcome to session two of Santa Fe Institute's Complexity Explorer Mesa tutorial, Agent-Based Modeling in Python. I'm here with Rob Axtell, one of the co-creators of the Sugarscape model, particularly the one we're using, Sugarscape with Traders, right? In the book, Growing Artificial uh, Societies. So Rob, could you please introduce for us the Sugarscape with Traders model? Okay, well, thank you for the introduction, Tom, and happy to be here talking to you guys. So in the Sugarscape model, as you guys remember, there's are, there are resources distributed around the landscape. And on that landscape, uh, in the simplest case, is just sugar. Uh, but uh, in order to address models of trade, traders, we want to have a second uh, commodity. So the second commodity is, is what we call not nominally spice. And then we give the agents uh, preferences for both the sugar and the spice. And then uh, they're going to, uh, given the fact that those resources are heterogeneous on the landscape, the, the agents uh, encounter them differentially, will accumulate them at different rates, and then we'll find that there's some advantage to trading them back and forth. Now, how did we specify uh, the ways that the uh, trade would happen? It turns out that um, in economics, there's a well-understood theory of uh, bilateral bargaining, as it were, uh, that's called the Edgeworth box. That is, uh, say Tom has so much sugar and a certain amount of spice, I have different amounts, we may, we have some different preferences for the, whether maybe Tom likes sugar more than spice, and I'm the reverse. Uh, we meet in general. The idea is that he's been out accumulating these things. I've been accumulating these things. We meet, and in general, there's some way for us to rearrange our holdings. And the key is to make us both better off, so we both benefit from the trade. And so, the way economists do this is what's is through what's called the you, know, you you compute the marginal rate of substitution of these things, and then that that gives uh, that determines kind of a local price at which you want to trade trade the sugar for the spice. And uh, if Tom has got a, one price and I have a different price, we just pick a price in the middle somewhere and we'll trade at that price. And then we, we can exchange uh, uh, at that price. We are both better off after the after the trade. That's a whole kind of theory of how it works. And then what, so what we did on the sugar scape models, we just implemented that. Uh, every time agents are immediate neighbors, they end up being, uh, uh, they engage in this kind of trade when they're on the, on the sugar and spice landscape. Uh, now, it turns out that um, conventional theory has a lot to say about how that should work. And the usual kind of supply and demand story would apply, should apply, when you think about the fact that there's you know, going to be some, you know, in the case of the sugar state model, like you know, a few hundred buyers, a few hundred sellers, they should follow the supply and demand uh, calculus. But it turns out that um, in this distributed, de decentralized, bottom-up view of the world that we have in the sugar scape, um, you know, whether supply and demand equilibria obtain or not is a scientific question. You can ask, you know, under what conditions will it obtain or not? And so just, the, you know, the basic result is that in markets uh, where people only engage in bilateral trade and not global exchange, uh, there's in essence just some kind of friction uh, limiting the achievement of the supply and demand equilibrium. And so what you observe in the sugar scale model then is, is you observe these departures from the pure supply and demand uh, configuration. Uh, in essence, you get you know you get somewhat less uh, quantity traded. That that's the frictional part of it. Uh, but the but the pricing is being about the about right. So you you can get the get the price to turn out right more or less, but the quantity is uh, suppressed. But then over time, the, the people will trade more and more. And so just in some one way to think about then the the uh, the trader model and the sugarscape is just that it's a bottom up view of how supply and demand emerges uh, from the interactions of it, in the individual you know purposive agents. We won't say rationalists. So they're, they're somewhat rational in the sense that they're they're doing what's best for themselves, but they're not rational in the sense of trying to you know I'm trading with Tom. I'm not seeking out like you know Bill Gates to trade with or George Soros or something. I'm, I'm just trade trading with whoever in my neighborhood. So uh, it's a fairly conventional view, but rendered at the level of a lot of interacting agents. Now it turns out that. Economists had worked out some of the theory for this, but but in fact, when we, when we built that model in '94, so book came out in '96, um, the, 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 much of the theory was still in, in development in the sense. And so it turns out that um, what we know today, which is quite interesting, I think, is that um, these decentralized models have have quite good computational complexity, meaning that they can easily be produced by agents who are just doing that, running around trading stuff locally at, at their price that they themselves. Whereas if you try to compute the market clearing price from the top down, as it were, by say aggregating everybody's preferences and saying, you know, how much, should, what should the the price be that's going to clear the market? That is actually known today, only known by the way from from ninety four forward, really, as a as a, a very hard computational problem, technically kind of you know an NP type hard problem. It turns out um, uh, a computer scientist to find a new complexity class that's in between P and NP that would include this this. Uh, Walrasian fixed point problem of, of market, say, but uh, but without going down that uh, into those details, the idea is that um, uh, a bottom up view of, of decentralized view of exchange among individuals leading to a kind of a market clearing price is a, is kind of a different perspective than the usual just supply and demand 
uh, picture, but is, is in some sense a richer one and probably a more realistic one than imagining, imagining that, um, you know, somebody, you know, when you drive home tonight and you see the price of gas on the corner, uh, it's, it's just not clear that, uh, you know, some uh, auctioneer has computed that from the top down, much more likely that the that the gas station manager has just decided to raise the price today by a penny or reduce it by a penny. And and that, that's the way, way real economies work, right? A bunch of adaptive agents all, all adapting to one another, not uh, waiting for an auctioneer to announce the market clearing price vector that uh, makes the economy uh, work at full speed. So, but with that as background, there are several, in, in the chapter on, on this in the Sugarscape, there are several excursions based on that general idea. Things like, you know, what if you suddenly change the preferences of the agents? Or what if you suddenly um, have a shortage of one of the goods or something, those those kinds of things. You can see how the prices adapt and come back. And so uh, uh, there are several different uh, variations on that in the sugar, sugar scape book, but the key idea is that um, just uh, having trade among the individuals, each one doing uh, this Edgeworth barter uh, yeah, and uh, le leading though to something that looks like a market clearing price. That was the basic idea of, of many years ago. Um, and uh, and I think it's, we're still the, t the test of time insofar as there have been a lot of uh, ABMs of uh, market phenomena subsequent to that model, and uh, many of them use this kind of uh, decentralized uh, price formation procedure to uh, understand how markets work. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rob. There's no way I could have given an introduction. <laughs> uh, so now that you understand where the sugar and seed uh, with traders models come from, let's get started.